okay so now let's discuss further about embedded systems what constitutes an embedded system what are actually like we have discussed in uh, computers the main parts of the computer there's a processor then we have input output ports we have memory we have storage units and other things so what constitutes an embedded system what are the broad block blocks in an embedded system at the center of each embedded system At the center of each embedded system, we have a processing unit. We have a processing unit, and there's a program written in it. There's a software that we call as firmware. Those are actually instructions that this processing unit executes. This processing unit may take input from the user, from the sensors. So, sensors. Okay. It's users, from sensors. And then of process, after processing these inputs, depending upon the instructions, it processes the input, we have an output. We have actuators at output, we call them actuators that actually turn these electric signals coming out of processing unit into mechanical motion or sometimes maybe we also have display units displays this may be displays so this is our embedded system and what is this processing unit? has to be a it is a processor it has to be a microprocessor it has to be a microprocessor but are normal microprocessors suitable uh, to be used in situations like these in which we have a lot of constraints we have power constraints we have memory we have um, uh, space constraints can we use normal processors can we use normal processors can we use normal processors because to make this processors functional we have to we have to add external RAM to it we have to add ROM we have to add input output ports we have to add other things maybe timers and other things so it will become bulky and it will not be suitable to be used inside embedded system inside a toy inside a glucometer inside a, inside a calculator inside an ac so what we did we created a space special ic a special integrated circuit a special chip and we called it a microcontroller what exactly is a microcontroller A microcontroller is an IC which has a small amount of processor on it that is it says microprocessor incorporated on it and on the same IC we have a small amount of RAM we have small amount of ROM we have some input output ports we might have timers and other things we will be discussing all these things in detail in some subsequent lectures that's true and this IC we called as microcontroller. Let me try to explain this again. A mic microprocessor does not have enough memory for program and data storage. Neither does it have any input and output devices. Thus, when a microprocessor has to be used to design a system, several other chips such as memory chips, that's RAM and ROM and input output ports are also used to make up the complete microcomputer system. For many applications, applications like in embedded systems, toys, household electronics, office electronics, for embedded system, for many electron uh, applications, these extra 
chips imply additional cost and increased size of the product and th these may not be suitable for these applications. For example, when used inside a toy, a designer would like to minimize the size and cost of the electronic equipment inside the toy. Therefore, in such applications, a microcontroller is used more often than a mi microprocessor. And what is a microcontroller? Microcontroller is actually a single IC. A microcontroller is a chip that consists of a microprocessor. And it also consists a small amount of memory and some input-output ports, all on a single chip, thus making it suitable to be used as a computing device, as a processing device, inside an embedded system i think that's fine you might have understood so if i sh if i like i would like to show it like this we have a general purpose computer we have a cpu a microprocessor here and to make it functional we have to connect it with some amount of RAM some amount of ROM some IO ports IO pins timers and other things using our data bus to get the data in and out from RAM, ROM, input output ports to the CPU data bus and also we will use address bus to connect each of these blocks so this is how a general purpose computer is designed around a microprocessor but microprocessors they have no inbuilt RAM, no inbuilt ROM, no input output ports. But microcontrollers have all these things. In fact, there are many more peripherals in modern microcontrollers. We have, for example, we have ADCs also inbuilt uh, on these microcontrollers. So here we have, we might have central processing unit. We have RAM. We have ROM. We have IO ports. We have timers, we have serial communication ports, and extra. So, microcontrollers, therefore, they occupy less space, they consume less power, less price per unit because they have limited amount of RAM and ROM. And we need limited amount of RAM and ROM in our embedded systems. We don't need extensive amount of RAM, ROM and input output ports because we have to do a very specific and a small job. So we need a limited amount of RAM, uh, uh, memory and limited amount of po uh, ports that actually reduces the cost per unit of a microcontroller. And it also occupies less space and consumes less power. Microcontrollers are therefore also called as embedded processors. Embedded processors. A, cu a couple of things more uh, I want to discuss before I wrap up. So in this course now we have discussed these terms, we have discussed the important terms I will write, we have discussed microprocessors or processors, we have also discussed microcontrollers, what exactly microcontrollers are and what are embedded systems these three terms our course the whole course will revolve around these three terms in the first unit unit one we will be studying about microprocessors let me open syllabus wait a second please okay uh, in the first unit, we'll be studying about these microprocessors. We'll be starting with a basic microprocessor, maybe 8085. We'll be uh, studying about the evolution of microprocessors, their internal architecture, how are actually they designed, what are what are the building block blocks of a microprocessor. 
the resistors in it and different other things we are also going to study about the instruction set of these microprocessors this will be unit first and unit second we will move towards our microcontrollers again we'll be discussing about the internal architecture the programming language used the instructions and how these instructions are executed in microcontrollers is unit two unit three we will be discuss some advanced topics of microcontroller or microprocessor programming they may include they may include timers counters they may also include uh, interrupts serial communication etc in unit 4 we'll be discussing how to interface these sensors these sensors and these actuators these actuators with our microcontrollers this is the microcontroller part will be will be actually uh, studying about how to interface sensors how to interface a temperature sensor how can a microcontroller microprocessor get the information out of a temperature or a pressure sensor and how it can drive a motor how it can display things on an lcd and other things will be inter will be studying about and this thing is known as interfacing so unit 4 will be about interfacing we'll be studying about the interfacing of io devices like leds lcds keyboards motors adc sensors external memory etc and then unit 5 will be about some special microcontroller boards like arduino Raspberry Pi so our majority of the portion is actually about microcontrollers and since embedded systems are built around microcontrollers so it is about microcontrollers and embedded system now the books there are uh, there will be many books I will be referring to but majority of the portion will be from Mazudi Mazudi MA uh, M A Mazdi M A Mazdi and S Niami or the authors. The name of the book. They have authored many books around microcontrollers, around different microcontrollers. They have uh, authored books around 8051 microcontroller. Controller. It's a type of mi microcontroller around PIC microcontrollers. But what? Uh, we are going to study at mega 328 at mega 328 microcontroller in our course and it will be actually the first time we are, will be studying at mega 328 in course uh, so far we, we we were studying 8051 microcontroller at the university now we have switched to a at mega 328 microcontroller and there's a book on at mega 328 microcontroller by M. A. Mazdi and S. Niami. I will be sharing its Amazon link. If anybody wants to, uh, anybody wants to buy it uh, from there. It's a, actually it's a very good and very simple book. I recommend that everyone should have this book. And unit one will be mainly from Gonkar. R. S. Gonkar. Microprocessor architecture, programming, and applications with 8085. I have also uh, I have also written down these books in the pre-course uh, course uh, details i have posted in uh, google classroom but i don't recommend buying uh, this book i only recommend buying one book that is the book authored by mazdi and yami uh, around at mega 328 microcontroller i'll be sharing the link also so that is it that is the first lecture thank you thank you very much